two, how to make a great chain of thinking. What we know about biology changes every single day. The amount of information and knowledge and data is growing exponentially. We can't keep up. It is impossible to know everything. However, I can teach you in this teachable moment to think about how to tie together fundamental concepts in biology. In this skill, we'll use this to create great chains of thinking. Throughout this course, I would like you to be able to pick any two words and make five links between them. You should be able to talk through those links without a gap in logic. To create a great chain of thinking, you need seven circles. So draw seven circles on a sheet of paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The term great chains of thinking is a play off what Plato thought about when he thought about the great chain of being. And what Plato thought in terms of evolution was that it only went in one direction. It started with the most simple and it got to the most complex. However, evolution as well as thinking is not a linear process. And instead of only being able to go one direction, you want to be able to go both directions. And so the idea between the great chain of thinking is that you're able to link the concepts both between them as well as in a big picture. Let me give you an example of how this works. I find that the use of seven circles works best. If you can make five logical links between two words, then you have a quality understanding of how these topics connect. So let's choose two words, trait and evolution, and see how we can connect them with five words. All right, let's look at the first option. Let's put trait in the first circle and evolution at the end. Individuals have traits. So we can connect trait to individual. We know that individuals also have adaptations. That would be the next circle. Adaptations confer fitness. Fitness leads to natural selection. Natural selection is an idea of Darwin, and Darwin is famous for evolution. Hence, that provides a great chain of thinking. All right, now we have option two. Check out the circles. Trait is still in the first circle, and evolution is still in the last circle. But in this case, a trait might be expressed as a phenotype. That's the physical of what you see. That phenotype has a genotype basis. That genotype is part of the DNA. A DNA is within a gene or an allele. Alleles change in proportion, and that change in proportion is evolution. We can also do it backwards. Evolution is a change in allele frequencies, which are DNA. DNA leads to genotypes, which are expressed as phenotypes that we see as traits. So, as you can see, you can go forwards or backwards in the great chain of thinking. One more option. Let's look at trait again in the first circle and evolution in the end. A trait might be something like antibiotic resistance. These are traits common in bacteria. Bacteria, as you know, are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes can be endosymbionts. They can live within eukaryotes. That makes the connection there. And that leads to the eukaryotic theory of evolution. Sometimes, as you saw in option A, you might be able to work on a detailed level of understanding of a single topic by using words that tightly connect ideas. In other cases, like option C, these might be really bigger picture links if you have words that come for different topics. In this teachable moment, we've talked about great chains of thinking. I introduced them to you because I think that it's a really valuable way to study biology. Now, everybody likes to study a little bit different, and you can think about how to use the great chain of thinking based on how you like to study. Do you like to physically touch things? In that case, you can make strips of paper. You can physically link ideas with a little tape. Do you, are you a visual type of person? You can have some post-its. You can post things all over your dorm room. Or are you kind of the classic pen and paper or on the board? And you can do the circle method that was demonstrated in this video. Either way, it's a really great way to practice. I encourage you to play this game as a study tool with others. To do this, take the following steps. Write out a variety of keywords from each class topic on index cards. Mix up the cards. Place them face down like the memory game you played as a kid. Have someone draw two cards and place them on opposite ends. Give everybody five blank index cards. 
Then, who's ever playing, fill in the words that help connect the ideas. Then explain them to your friends. If there are new terms, add those to your deck of cards. Compare and contrast how you connect the first card with the last one, and you've created great chains of thinking. Remember, as a general rule in biodiversity, everything connects to everything else.